I'm excited to bring you this one. Player One's brand newly released Artemis C Pro camera. It utilizes Sony's IMX294 based sensor, so I have very high hopes indeed for this one. There's a lot to talk about with the IMX294 and I will get to all of it in just a moment. But before I do, I want to make it completely clear and transparent with you guys that this product has just been sent to me for review and usage and demonstration and all that kind of thing with absolutely zero strings attached, okay? Uh, nothing whatsoever. I've got complete freedom with my review. I can say whatever I want, do whatever I want, just give you my authentic experience with it. So huge props and respect to Player One Astronomy for agreeing to that. Now, on the note of the sensor that's using this thing, the Sony IMX294, they've been out a couple of years now, and when they first hit the market, admittedly, they tripped up a lot of people, me included. Uh, among them, I used to own a ZWO ASI294 MC Pro many moons ago, uh, and once I got to grips with it, I loved it, yeah, it was a great camera. Um, but early on, because I was one of the early adopters to that camera, no, none of us really knew how to use it back then. So there's a few quirks to the sensor, uh, which once you're made aware of, you can completely sidestep any issues with calibration. And that is the fact that if you're taking flats, they need to be long flats from a dim source, probably ideally something that's pure white as well, if possible. But generally speaking, you need flats to be three seconds long or longer. You need to use dark flats or flat darks or whatever the heck you want to call them. Rather than bias frames, bias frames are hopeless with the 294 because it has an unstable bias signal with short exposures, and that's about it. Oh, and it has AM glow, of course, uh, so you need to make sure that you use matched darks in, in every way, so in terms of temperature and gain and offset. Well, I can't wait a second longer, so let's get stuck into this. As you can see, it's a fully printed box. Just pop that off piece of foam protecting a long cable at the top which is USB A to USB C probably somewhere in the region of two meters maybe a little longer I'll put up uh, the correct spec for you on the screen so I'll just take the camera case out it does come with a case as you can see we have a USB C to C linking cable and a USB A to C short cable in there I've just noticed as I've just flung this piece of polystyrene out that also your uh, tilt adjustment allen key is tucked into that neatly also so we'll move all this to one side and get on with the unboxing as fast as i possibly can so it comes with a zipped case which is slightly stuck there we go it's a hard case luckily nice felted finish inside um, we've got a wire management strap velcroed very nice a pack of screws for attaching this thing to the uh, optional accessories such as the uh, off-axis guider or uh, maybe the filter drawer system a dust bulb whoops good to see I've got butter fingers today a M48 female to M48 male, hopefully this is focusing, 20 millimeter adapter with, oh, this is screwed inside it for stowing. <laughs> A 1.25 inch nose piece, which is M42, because it has an M42 to M48 adapter ring chucked in there as well, very nice. So these are all really well finished pieces of kit. And the other space that comes with it is an M48 female to M48 male, 17.5 millimeters. The camera itself has a back focal distance from the uh, threads, M48 female threads of 17.5 millimeters to the sensor. So I'll just move this out of there. You can see what a lovely bit of kit that is. It just feels like quality. In the hand, um, I wish you could have feel O vision so you could see what I'm talking about or feel what I'm talking about. But yeah, really, really pleased with the fit and finish of the thing. Wonderful. You can see the Artemis C Pro, IMX294, 4 thirds sensor, 14 bit ADC, 11.7 megapixels. USB C's, as we discussed, one for the camera itself and one for a 
connected device. Uh, power input, this camera can be used by the way without additional power if maybe you're just using it in an outreach scenario and you don't have access to oodles of power like you do when you're at home. Nice little o-ring on this uh, cover. There's the sensor, I'm not gonna talk over the top of that. Uh, I don't wanna get any spit particles or anything equally disgusting on it. So that all looks wonderful. On to the next steps. All right guys, so I'm in the warm room and hopefully you can see, I've just got a little test rig set up here. I've got a power bank with a output meter so I can tell you exactly what this thing is gonna draw to cool to a certain set point. We've got an ambient of 23.8 degrees in the warm room. Actually, true to its name, it is pretty toasty in here. And I've got the camera connected up to a front USB just via the included cable. And it's waiting right there. It's capped off. And uh, I'm going to do a few tests. As I mentioned, though, um, you don't actually need to worry about consumption so much if you're at home. But if you're out and about, I thought this might be useful information for some people. Uh, so why not add it? All right guys, hopefully you can see this. It's requiring 62% cooler power. Currently at minus 10.6, so a slight overshoot as it's just finished cooling down. It's four minutes. From an ambient of 26.1 degrees, this may be getting a slight little bit of side wash from that camera, not much. And it is drawing 18 watts of power at 12 volts to do that. So I'd say a really rather efficient cooler, all things considered. I hope that's useful information to you guys. So just carrying straight on from uh, what we were doing right there. As you can see, I've got the camera connected up in SharpCap, just the latest version of SharpCap. I just downloaded the Player One drivers onto my PC, um, direct from the Player One website support page. Very easy thing, just one click install. It's a really smooth to install driver suite and uh, let's just check things out a little bit so it comes on with zero gain set and zero offset that have been set running at 33.2 frames per second so completely full speed uh, it's good to see that it achieves the speeds that they advertise now this is in raw 8 i've just noticed so if you're checking raw 16 um 16.7 16.4 16.6 around that sort of range so we'll put things back to RAW 8 and see what its maximum frame rates that it can attain are. So to do that, we'll probably need to drop the uh, exposure down to something very small. So let's say you're doing a, a small lunar segment, uh, maybe 8,034 um, by 706 or 1,024 by 768. That's more standard resolution. 340 frames per second. So um, pretty snappy to say the least right there. So that's really quick. Yeah, we're not limited by that exposure length right there yet. And maybe down at something like 640 by 480 if you were imaging Jupiter, for example, 525 frames per second. Rapid, yeah, very, 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 very quick. So it's good to see it can achieve extremely high frame rates. Now, um, if I just untick the connection from this right here, I've also downloaded Nina, just uh, version 2.2. Really quick, as you can see, selected it right there and hit connect. Let's see what it all pops on at. Um, so the cooler is currently switched off. I'll make sure my DC bank is on. Yes, it is. So now if I hit to cool, the fans just kicked in. So it should indeed start to cool. Yeah, 5% cooler power applied. Now zero. 5%, it's 4 watts it's drawing right now, we'll have to wait for it to uh, ramp up and I'll tell you what it is when it stabilizes. Interestingly it looks like this comes on at zero gain, zero offset also. That's probably not where you'd want to use this camera, uh, I think around 120 gain is um, sort of optimal, that's when the high conversion gain mode kicks in and you get a boost in dynamic range as well as a huge drop in read noise, that's where I'll be using this camera. Anyway, I think it's its best setting, most likely. Um, so the cooling is really starting to ramp up now. I've requested minus 10, but bear in mind, it's actually getting quite warm in this place now. I don't know if you can see, 24.6 degrees right next to where the camera is. 
15 watts are being drawn to run the cooler at 47 percent 16 watts now so uh no different at all really i would say to my uh poseidon that kind of thing it just uses about the same sort of power i'll let you know uh with a pop-up on the screen right now what it's actually at when things have stabilized at minus 10 uh it's, i'm asking for a quite a big delta there but i'm sure it'll make it and I'm hoping now for some clear skies. So, guys, if I do get some clear skies soon, I will provide you with an image at the end of this video. But if not, it'll have to wait for another another video. So, um, I think I've shown you about all that I really can show you. I made some notes uh, about things I wanted to talk about. I think I've gone through most of them. So, I really do appreciate you guys coming and watching my videos. All the support that you give massively helps me out as i mentioned i sometimes struggle getting people uh, interested in having stuff reviewed on the channel so uh, all the support that you guys give me really helps me keep moving things forward uh in this thing that i love doing so yeah that's about it i uh very much look forward to seeing you all in the next one and i can't wait to get this thing hooked up now on the rasa and take some really fast deep space images so look after yourselves and i will see you in the next one